Hi! Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel, Reverend Me Ling. I've been known by a few names. Reverend Me Ling, Reverend Susan Me Ling, Susan Me Ling, Lady Me Ling, Lady Dory Bell. Whole bunch of other names over the course of my life, realistically. Uh, so I'm going to discuss a few different things. In particular, what I'm going to discuss is in reference to Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. Now, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., had been the individual, along with Lazy Eye or Jamie Robles, also known as Jamie Robles, um, in regards to that 151 Road Warrior thing. In that regard, um, yeah, um, which when I was told about it, I, I thought it sounded like terrorism. That's what it sounded like to me. It didn't sound like anything less than terrorism, not just because of the fact that both of them were essentially targeting the entire city of San Antonio using the 1604 loop because of the Cactus Jack nickname to Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. Uh, when he was in ROTC, or Reserve Officer Training Corps. Also because of Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, um, having a temper tantrum because her artwork or something another wasn't approved for something in reference to um, the Fiesta thing in San Antonio. And since it just so happened that the event of the Mad Max something another with the movie thing um, occurred during the week of Fiesta in San Antonio at the Alamo Draft House off of 410 and 151 um, near Marbach, um, that was their excuse, in my opinion, although I highly doubt I am the only person who finds that to be an excuse on their part. That being said, so I'm going to give a little bit of a background in comparison to prior videos and certain references to Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., and some little bits and pieces of Lazy Eye, also known as J.B. Robles. So I met Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., through Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, at Nine Lives Bookstore. At the time that I had actually met Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., I was doing Reiki healing sessions and gemstone healing sessions, chakra therapy healing sessions, and then a combination of with and without Reiki, some other different aspects in combination. I didn't really, um, I, I also had the ability to, to do readings. Um, however, in comparison to other people's clientele base that sought them out at Nine Lives Bookstore, I really wasn't um, as well known in that regard. And I, although I had my Reiki master teacher certification, um, I wasn't nearly as others were as far as people knowing. And so I would just help out and volunteer at the bookstore because, I mean, there were only a handful of times every now and then that I'd wind up doing a healing session or a reading. And so I was also in the back corner. So, you know, they'd see like other individuals well before they saw me. And so, you know, that was where uh, Lisa Williams, the manager at Nine Lives Bookstore, um, the animal whisperer said that I should be in comparison to like all the other individuals throughout the store. And so, okay, and I'll just, did what I did, you know, and instead of just not doing anything, I just helped where I could. And so, um, in that regard, 
Jamie Robles, the lazy eye female, she had spoken with me a whole bunch of times and she was enthralled in reference to my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 and the after effects. One day during one of the fairs, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., showed up with her um, to where I was standing and Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, said, Susan, this is, you know, Cactus Jack. Well, she said Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. Uh, well, just Jeffrey. Nonetheless, Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. Uh, so I had, you know, I was myself. I was nice a and genuinely, not like Anna nice. I was just genuine, you know, unlike her. And so just being realistic. And where Jamie Robles, or Lazy Eye, was discussing certain things, she kept saying, you need to tell Cactus Jack, or Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., about, you know, your head injury. So I did. And then um, they started asking me a bunch of questions in that area, and they are like, well you know, if, what are the after effects? And I was like, well, you know, had the coma. Well, how long were you in a coma? I don't know. I was in a coma. Well, where did it happen? At Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And it was during basic training. And that was when I was told about the Cactus Jack nickname for Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. And I, I looked at him and I said, well, why didn't you do something different with that nickname? And he looked at me and he goes, what do you mean? What could be done with the nickname Cactus Jack? And I looked at him and I was like, um, a lot. Especially, you know, this is after 9-11. So if you were genuinely serious about being a part of the United States of America's Armed Forces Army Branch, you would have taken that and instead of looking at it as you were being picked on, you would have looked at that and been like, I'm going to take this, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this for fuel, I'm going to show you not only am I to show you how hardcore I am, but at the exact same time, I'm going to show you how much of a thorn in the side I'll be. And I gave him different examples in that regard, and he looked at me and he was like, yeah, whatever, nobody would believe that. And I said... Well, that's your own issue. Like, realistically, I mean, there are plenty of people who have gotten nicknames over the years. And instead of letting just that one particular nickname define them, they utilize that. And so, you know, I'm sure there are military guys, at least at that time, that's what I was discussing. Now I know there's like the guy, you know, General Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis. I mean, you know, I'm sure at first, you know, he was, you know, rah, 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 rah. and then he was like, you know what, I'll take that and I'll show you what a mad dog actually looks like. I'll not only show you what a mad dog actually does when it comes to, you know, I didn't have this as an example back then. Nonetheless, not only am I going to show you what a mad dog does when you get that dog to show its teeth, I'm going to show you how I'm going to rip you to shreds in a lot more East Coast terminology words and you know sort of stuff um, but I had tried to give that as an example not specifically Mad Dog Mattis but had given the example of you could completely use that you could use that to, to your advantage to have it where people are genuinely like if you're on enemy you know territory and they hear your name, they start trembling and they start second guessing whether or not they actually want to go up against you. However, <laughs> since you chose to fold and, you know, complain, um, well, you can deal with the nickname of Cactus Jack and the fact that you're in the state of Texas and, you know, the United States of America's Armed Forces Army Branch is the oldest branch of the United States of America's Armed Forces military. So no matter where you go in the Army, um, where the Army has done stuff, you will never not be able to know that, you know, the Army is there. 
and he did not like that. He did, he, he did not like that. <laughs> Internally, I giggled because it was one of those, well, you can't be in the United States of America <laughs> without that knowledge. However, what, whatever it is, it is. So, Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, she kind of looked at me and she goes, well, why would you say something like that? And I said, well, it's true. Have you ever, like, looked into military history? The United States of America's army branch has, you know, been around, like, almost as long or as long as the Navy. So, you know, um a thing and so then they continued asking me questions in reference to well you know what do you remember before your head injury uh, and I gave the very few examples I could give and then they looked at me and they and then they looked at each other and then they looked back at me and they said well have you ever watched movies yeah I've watched movies well what do you remember as far as movies so I remember Disney movies before my head injury and they laughed and I looked at them and I'm like, I mean, that's, that's what I can remember. And I explained how my biological parents would not allow me to watch, you know, anything above a, a G rating until I was 13. And then when I was 13, I had to get approval of what I could actually watch. And even then, like, I didn't get to see my first PG-13 movie until after I was, like, a freshman. It was somewhere between freshman and sophomore year. And it was what was approved in comparison to what I had picked out. And the two of them looked at each other, and they talked amongst themselves, and then they spoke with me, and they were just like, so, have you seen this movie? Have you seen... No. And so, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., started making fun of me and he's like that's so funny and he brought up all these different things about pop culture and I looked at him and I said okay whatever you know um my life is what my life is so where you are into what you're into everybody has their own thing I don't have that luxury in that regard because that would mean I'd be able to go to a movie theater or handle watching and all that sort of stuff in comparison. I don't. So, it is what it is. So, in reference to time going on in that regard, I wound up learning that Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., had gone to um, Lee High School. And he was very upset because they had removed the Confederate flag. And he had used a word that I did not feel comfortable with him using in reference to the NAACP. And I, I told him, I didn't think that that was what the word act or the acronym actually meant. And he said, no, 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 it's a funny joke. And I said, mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. And I told him what I remembered in reference to Crystal Lake South and in reference to specifically AJ. And, you know, he was wearing all black clothing and stuff like that when Nick Robinson had used the N-word when looking in my direction and I was ready to throw down. Didn't matter. I was in my cheerleading uniform. And Nick Robinson said to his girlfriend, Joy Hoover, you need to control your cheerleader, and I looked at her, and I was like, uh, first off, I'm not your cheerleader, and second, um, don't think that's gonna happen, I have a feeling, and then I went and looked back at Nick Robinson, and told him to stop, and then he was like, well, I'm talking to the guy behind you, and then I looked, and I saw AJ in his black jacket, and his black shirt, and his black pants, and his black backpack, and his black shoes. And I'm like, I don't care what he's wearing. That doesn't give you the right to use that word. And, well, I handled things. <laughs> I laid them out. 
on the floor of the pit in the common area, and I kept swinging until the teacher said, stop. I'm going to keep going. And then in my anger, I got up and I told him I hoped that, you know, the, the next game he'd be taken out and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And ironically, he was. He actually got clotheslined. And that was the end of that. And he was taken out on a stretcher. And so it was just one of those, you know, maybe you shouldn't use that word. <laughs> In my thoughts, that's what, you know, Joy Hoover on the sidelines. Yeah. I could be so mean right now is what I actually said out loud. I didn't, it wasn't in my head. I actually said that. And Joy Hoover looked at me and she's crying and she said, What could you say that's, that's, that's so mean? Like right now, Nick is hurt and blah, 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 blah. Well, I did, you know, tell him what I told him after I laid him out on the con on the on the floor in the middle of the commons area in the pit. So, I mean, I wasn't going to technically say it to just like, you know, I was going to be nice, but since you wanted to know, I guess technically that's mean, huh? And <laughs> Why do you have to bring that up? You asked me. <laughs> don't ask me a question you don't want the answer to, you dumb bitch. It's, oh, why are you being so mean to me? I'm not being mean. <laughs> Would you like to know what it's like? For me to actually be mean? No, you're so... <laughs> Stop crying. It's not like it's you out on that stretcher. Get over it. Oh, it's my boyfriend. Blah, 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 blah. It's my boyfriend. I'm going to cry if I want to. I don't really like that <laughs> we're cheerleaders um remember I did not want to be a cheerleader <laughs> so um you know and you know out of curiosity how's that control going not working out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, I had, I had told Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., about that, and he looked at me and he was like, well, why did you think that he called you the N-word? I said, because of where I'm from. I mean, where I grew up walking around, you know, the, I mean, I'm just saying well, where'd you grow up walking around? Uh, New Jersey. And then, you know, the five boroughs of New York. Um, Philadelphia. Pittsburgh. And then the particular areas in New Jersey. Have you ever been to Camden? Have you ever been to Newark? Have you ever been to Hoboken? Have you ever been to the Pines? I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not trying to, like, sound rude, uh, but how could you not see that? And he looked at me just, oh my god, what? I just, I just didn't realize that, you know, you saw yourself like that. I'm just saying that word actually means ignorant. And by technicalities, at that time I said Jeffrey, but, you know, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., you technically are ignorant because that's actually what that word means. So, if you want to go and say that as far as the NAACP, then yes, you as an ignorant fool are causing problems and he just well I can see why the cheerleader thought you were mean oh no I'm, I'm really nice 
<laughs> like by by technicalities in comparison to that. Oh, so sweet in comparison. You know, because how long did it take in this discussion for me to get to that point with you? And you just, uh, well, you know, I knew pop culture. Okay. And so then he was like, so you're from like the hood? I was like, well, where I grew up wasn't necessarily the hood. It was like the middle class area where I grew up walking around. Yeah, you could say that was the hood. Technically, you could in certain locations, especially in the boroughs. And he looked at me and he's like, well, I'm from the ghetto. I looked at him and I'm like, in San Antonio? There's a ghetto in San Antonio? Where's the ghetto? And he looked at me and he's like, because I live in, or he, at that time, he lived inside of the loop of 410. And I was like, um, I've driven inside of the loop of 410. That is not what I would consider the ghetto. I wouldn't consider that the hood at all. And he said that because he went to General Lee High School or something or another, and because of the Confederate flag being removed from the um, whatever, and then they had to change the mascot and all that sort of stuff, that, you know, he had an issue afterwards because of the school. And I looked at him and I was like, but I don't understand. It's, it's a school. It's not, I mean, it's based off of certain aspects. In the historical aspect, you need to keep that because in the historical aspect, that is how you have a reminder to not repeat history. <laughs> However... <laughs> In a high school, I could see why they would remove that name. That makes perfect sense. You know, I mean, it, it did they keep the name of Lee High School? And he said yes. And I said, well, then, you know, you still can learn from history from that. In the rest of, you know, the state of Texas and the United States of America, yeah, you need to, like, keep those monuments around so that way... You can genuinely learn from those specific aspects. However, in a high school like that, yeah, no, that makes sense why they would they would want that removed. It makes perfect sense. And so then, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., was like, no, 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 no. You don't know what the hood is. And I'm just standing there and I'm thinking... I think I do. <laughs> I'm fairly certain where I grew up walking around. I'm fairly certain I know what the hood is. Um, I have a feeling. I have a feeling you, you and I have a very different interpretation of what the hood is by a lot. And so then... Lazy Eye, or Jamie Robles, said she knew what the hood was. And I said, okay, well, where is it? Because she said she lived in San Antonio in the hood. And I was like, where? And she said, closer to 410 in Marbach. And, uh, and then Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., said, so side. And I, I got confused because I thought to myself, I was like, I don't think that's south side. <laughs> I mean, it's technically the South-ish, but the South of San Antonio, that's not, I don't think that's the South side of San Antonio. I mean, it could be compared to where we are right now, but I don't, I don't think that's considered the South side. And I don't think that people from that vicinity um, would tolerate you saying that like that. Um, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, you don't know. And I'm like, no, I think I do. I have a feeling because like, if you were to be walking around where I grew up walking around and you yelled out so soot like that, um, even if you were in the South side of anywhere, I mean, even in Illinois, if you were to be in Chicago, 
and you're so so you you you'd be you'd be introduced some, to some individuals in a specific sort of way that um, you would be introduced to um, the concrete for talking like that, looking like you. And he said, oh, that's racist. And I looked at him, I was like, mm, how is that racist? I don't understand how that's racist. And especially after the word you just used to describe the NAACP. This weird feeling that that's like the opposite aspect. And so then, you know, as time went on and stuff like that, <laughs> Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, kept, like, pushing Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., to speak with me, which, in turn, upset Lisa Williams, the manager at Nine Lives Bucks, because she was accustomed to Cactus Jack just automatically going to her, and Jamie Robles would, like, stand next to Lisa Williams and laugh and, and tell her, well, you know, he found something shinier than you and, like, just do that sort of garbage. And it was just, I don't, I don't have patience for that. Like, I really don't. Like, that <laughs> just, I just don't have patience for that. At all. So then... Between the aspects of the Cactus Jack issue for Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., being a problem in regards to, like, how I viewed it, also he had an issue in reference to the whole General Lee High School thing and how, you know, I could easily see that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in comparison to a bunch of the other stuff and you know not in a bigger aspect in regards to the entire United States of America because you do need to be able to learn from history however you know in a high school setting yeah I could understand that and I did say though in reference to the the rebel thing that you know well you know I mean you could like the, the high school could have kept that and kind of been like, yeah, we're rebelling against, like, the other team and we're going to win, rah, 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 or whatever. And, like, cheerleader stuff. And, <laughs> and so, um, is what it is. Uh, nonetheless, in the other regards of that stuff it was also the fact that I didn't know pop culture. And so, Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, and Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., were like, we're going to teach you all about pop culture. And then I had said, well, in order for that to happen, that would mean I'd have to care enough to remember. And I have more important things to remember at this point in time. No offense to the people who do this stuff when it comes to pop culture. However, um, I need to make sure my children are okay. I'm dealing with, you know, my, at that time, but now dead ex-husband and that whole thing. And I was like, and, you know, I got the, the medical stuff as far as, you know, the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. So, you know not forgetting some other stuff, you know, in, in other ways. And they were like, well, what ways? And just, you know, military stuff, that's all. And they were like, well, you know, you should know pop culture more than you should know military stuff. You didn't graduate. Yeah, I know. I know I didn't graduate basic training. Like, I need you to tell me I didn't graduate basic training. I know that. <laughs> Duh. Duh. If I had graduated basic training, I'd have finished my AIT, and I would not be in the city of San Antonio, most likely. I'd be overseas doing stuff that needed to be done. Irony of other things. Nonetheless, you know, 
that pop culture stuff, I mean, hey, cool, those, those guys know how to make their stuff and do their stuff. However, you know, I've got some stuff I got to focus on that, you know, doesn't require that particular aspect. And so I got made fun of. And at one point, I don't know how many weeks or months went by, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., and Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, had made fun of me yet again for not knowing pop culture. And I looked at them as I was doing the, the stuff for the, for the volunteering in regards to the online book stuff. And I said, don't you find it to be ironic that you're making fun of me for not knowing pop culture stuff? And yet, at the same time, you, Cactus Jack, although I just said Jeffrey at that point from Kirkendall Jr., um, you left the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps because you got the nickname of Cactus Jack. Do you find any weird dichotomy and hypocrisy in you making fun of me for not knowing pop culture? while you ran away and essentially like gave up, threw up the white flag instead of, you know, proving yourself not only to your other fellow cadets in the ROTC program, but to the army for the United States of America. Don't you find that a little bit of a weird dichotomy that you're making fun of me because I don't know pop culture? And Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, looked at me and said, Don't you talk to Jeffrey like that. Like Dora said, I'm being, I'm being so kind, like you don't even know. Uh, however, I just went back to what I was doing. If that's what you want to do, 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 do <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> no. And so then, you know... Then Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., later wound up telling me about how he had done World War II reenacting. Because when I was speaking with one of the employees at Nine Lives Bookstore, he was talking about how he had done Civil War reenacting. And so the two of them started talking about the reenacting stuff. I asked, you know, well, which side are you guys on? And the one guy who did the Civil War reenacting, Howard, he had said, oh, the American side, duh. And I was like, that's right, have that. And he was like, yes. And so he started talking about some of the different firearms that he had and the different safety aspects. And I discussed some of the stuff as far as like my then, but now dead ex-husband and some of the firearms in that regard in reference to the black powder pistols and the black powder rifles. And I started asking Howard about certain aspects. Well, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., well, I do this in the World War II reenacting. And I was like, oh, okay, on the American side. And he goes, no, somebody has to play the bad guy. And both Howard and I looked at one another and we're just like, oh, I mean, yeah, somebody has to play the bad guy. You are correct. So, you know, well, what do you use for your reenacting stuff? And then Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., said that he had gotten a whole bunch of authentic stuff. And that was when I was like, ooh, really? Why authentic? And he was like, oh, well, you know, it makes it more... So children go to this thing? Yes, I don't think they're going to be able to tell the difference between authentic and, you know, recreated. Probably not, you know. And Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., had said he knew as far as, like, the threading and sort of stuff like that and all that. And I looked at him and I was like, okay, well, you know, to each their own, it is what it is. However, you don't really have to go to that level. If it is only for the historical teaching, if it's anything, in my opinion, if you are going beyond the historical teachings and you have to actually have authentic stuff, it kind of seems like you actually support that. 
And Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., said, Do you know what a good joke is? And I said, Well, I know a couple good jokes, but I guess you have a different reference. And Cactus Jack said, Well, you never had to worry about things being late when it came to World War II. Everything was on time. And Howard and I looked at one another and were just like, hmm. I mean, punctuality is important. Uh, I guess that's a, that's technically, um, technically a good thing in other ways. Uh, however, um, yeah, okay, sure. By, by technicalities. By technicalities. He still was an atrocious piece of trash who was throwing a temper tantrum and didn't like it. Oh, well, there you go. And so, <laughs> irony. So, um, in a lot of ways, irony. So, Jamie Rowe was also known as Lazy Eye. Her and Cactus Jack had started talking to me, but also to Howard, about the Mad Max thing and the Fiesta thing and all that sort of stuff. And Howard just listened. Howard didn't ask any questions. I was the one who asked a whole bunch of questions. Why would you do that? That's dumb. Why would you do that? That's dumb. Why would you do that? That's dumb. And, you know, they gave all these excuses why they thought it was cool and all that. So I'm like, eh, that sounds dumb. That sounds like terrorism, what you just described. I hope that there's a day where they, like, have a way to, like, charge you with terrorism for that. Because that sounds like terrorism. And the two of them said, no, 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 terrorism has to do with an airplane. I said, I don't think so. I think that, that um, it doesn't have to necessarily have an airplane involved. But that's my opinion. However, there is, like, the San Antonio International Airport. And so, you know, while they weren't technically involved, you know, maybe there was a pilot who saw. Or a co-pilot. Or somebody. I don't know. And so, in reference to that, you know, <laughs> that was that regard in that. And so, it was just one of those... They also discussed the aspects of Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., volunteering with his little brother, Jeremy Kirkendall, to be arrested when the police were at the 410 and 151 Marbach area of that particular Alamo draft house. And um, I understand that. Like, they're upset because they got arrested when they volunteered to be arrested. And that was the point where Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkland Jr., had said, well, that's the real hood. I was like, what? He goes, that's the real hood. What do you mean that's the real hood? And he said, you know, being in the drunk tank. And I was like, no, that's not the real hood. That's called jail. Jail is not the hood. The hood is the hood. Jail is jail. Prison is prison. Big difference. And so, you know, Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, would do all these things to try to defend Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. So I've gone on, not just in this particular official YouTube video of... But prior, in regards to that individual, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. So in reference to Jamie Robles, or also known as Lazy Eye, she had gone to school in different areas all throughout the actual South Side, like closer to Poteet, all the way up through the area of Marbach and... 410 area um, of different high schools, or not just high schools, but elementary schools and middle schools. Then um, I think she went to Alamo or Palo Alto Community College before she transferred to UTSA. And there was, at some point in time, the two of them had been 
in a school together. I can't remember which one they, they had told me. There's a point where the two of them were in the same school together um, before she had moved somewhere and they kept in touch and all that sort of stuff. However, Jamie Robles, also known as Lazy Eye, had gone to get her art degree. Like, she wanted, like, liberal arts of something and, like, painting. And she got really upset with me because I did not see certain things as she saw it. And so she had said that um, at one point in time, she had gone to see the actual red canvas in New York City on a uh, college field trip and I was like oh the red canvas that was what stuck out to you at the Metropolitan Museum of Art that's what stuck out nothing else that's throughout that entire building and she said it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful piece of art and I looked at Lazy Eye also known as Jamie Robles and I was like that was like the one piece of artwork that stuck out in comparison to the entire Met Center. Like that, that's it. That's like the only piece. Nothing else. No sculptures, no paintings like that actually have like actual paintings um, in comparison to the red canvas. It's just a red canvas. And Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, said that, well, art is supposed to evoke emotion and feelings and various forms of controversial thoughts when having an artistic discussion about it. And I looked at her and I said, well, okay. Um, I guess my point would be, how do you view the red canvas as art in comparison to everything else in the Metropolitan Museum of Art? I haven't been lucky enough to go there. I have always wanted to go there and be able to, like, walk around and see all that sort of stuff. However, I have a feeling that the red canvas, I just, you know, do, 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 walk right on past without giving a second thought beyond, uh, there's a, a, a red canvas, that's it. And so Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, had said, well, see, you proved my point. And I, I looked at her and I was like, I guess. However, I think there are plenty of other artistic pieces that can evoke a more positive response with more genuine discussion instead of arguing about whether or not a single color, just one, is considered art. I mean, you know, like there are red crayons. Are you going to say that a red crayon is like art? I mean, you use it to make art. <laughs> However, I'm just saying... You know, and she, Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, got really, really upset. She was like, I take offense to the fact that you don't find the red canvas to be a piece of art. And I looked at her, I said, okay, well, if the red canvas is a piece of art, does that mean my hair is a piece of art then? Because it's red. And she just, um, what? I said, oh, no. I mean, you know, I mean, if a red canvas is, like, actually considered art in that same sort of theory, are you going to say that my hair color and my haircut are the equivalent of art? Because I just think it's just my hair. However, if you're going to go on and on about the red canvas, you know, is that what you... And she said, Jamie Rule is also known as Lazy Eye, said... Ugh. Of course your hair is not art. It's like, okay. So then in that turn, the red canvas is not a piece of art. Like, I mean, it realistically is not difficult to paint a canvas red. 
There are so many ways. You could get a, red, a, a canvas and paint it all red. You can get a canvas and paint it all orange. And then you can get a canvas and paint it all yellow. And you get a canvas and paint it all green. And then I get another canvas and paint it all blue. And then I get another canvas and paint it all purple. And get another canvas and paint it all brown. And get another canvas and paint it all black. And then get another canvas and not paint it at all because it's white. And then say that each one of those are a piece of art. Or you could just get a canvas that's already pre that color and then make art on top of it. So Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, said that my argument was not considered valid in her opinion because I didn't go to college and she went to college to get her art degree. And then when I asked her, well, I learned art in kindergarten, like all the way through middle school. Um, does that not count? That apparently was not a good question to ask. <laughs> apparently that offended her a little bit more. And so then I tried to diffuse the discussion and I said, well, what about like artists who didn't go to get their art degree in a college and they make art? Are you going to say that they're not artists? And her response was yes. And I said, I very much disagree with you on that because I have seen some amazing murals when growing up in New Jersey and, you know, going to various boroughs in New York as well as throughout New Jersey and Pittsburgh and, and Philadelphia, you'd actually be quite surprised that despite those areas being the hood or the ghetto or whatever you want to call it, like, there are actually some genuinely amazing murals that you can find in like little itty bitty areas. And the colors are vibrant, the detail work is stunning, and in comparison to the red canvas, um, <laughs> I would consider that artwork actual artwork in comparison to the red canvas. And <laughs> she got so upset. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. And so then later when I wound up, it was during the final separation to my now dead ex-husband and I had gotten my first tattoo, her as in reference of Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles and Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr. They were both there at Platinum Inc. Tattoo off of 410 and Bandera when I had gotten my uh, first tattoo on my ankle, my uh, grayscale with the that. And so they were there when I had gotten my tattoo and Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, and Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., had both said, well, you know, look, you got, and, and they were being sarcastic when we discussed it later, are they, oh, you got artwork in your skin. Does that mean that your skin is more important than the red canvas? And I looked at them and I said, well, to me, yes. <laughs> uh, I would guesstimate other people who have gotten tattoos probably would agree. I mean, some of them might actually agree, possibly, that the red canvas is considered art, but people who've had tattoos done, they probably would review their own tattoos to be considered as art as well. I mean, they are called tattoo artists. So, you know, I'm just gonna throw that out there. That didn't go over so well. Lazy Eye, also known as J.B. Robles, really did not like my response to that. And I, I was, well, that's your problem. That's not my problem. 
and I didn't get my artwork or as far as my tattoos for you. I got it for me. My ink is mine. I mean, just saying. And so, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there. I would guesstimate every single tattoo artist that calls themselves a tattoo artist probably does some form of artwork. And uh, maybe some of them went to a college. Maybe some of them didn't. And if they did go to college, maybe they didn't even go to college for art. Does that include the exact same thing? And J.B. Robles, also known as Lazy Eye, said, no, it is not the same thing as her art degree. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I am going to disagree with that. And I would guesstimate there are plenty of tattoo artists and people who have gotten tattoos that would very much disagree with your point. Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles. And she didn't like that either. And so... There are a few additional points in that reference. However, um, I would guesstimate that the people of Nine Lives Bookstore would be able to give more aspects and reference to Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, as well as UTSA, um, because both Jamie Robles, also known as Lazy Eye, and Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., both went to UTSA. Uh, after whichever individual community colleges they went to, while Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., was in Reserve Officer Training Corps, or ROTC, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, they said that Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, would go with him to a bunch of his training. So, if that assists with that, hopefully so. So oh, there you go. If that's important. In reference to that 151 Road Warrior thing. And that. And the pictures that I was shown um, by Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr., he had said that the pictures that were taken were done by... Lazy Eye, also known as Jamie Robles, because she was doing it for an art project before, you know, having to drop it because of the financial aspects. Although I don't think that she had volunteered to be arrested. And then the other pictures were also taken by Jeremy Kirkendall. Uh, Cactus Jack, also known as Jeffrey Kirkendall Jr.'s little brother, uh, Leslie, who wound up becoming his fiance at that time that I knew them in 2006 and 2007. So, you guys have a good one. Um, comment, like, share, subscribe to my official YouTube channel, Robert Me Ling. And have a good one.